Uh, hello, my name is Craig Jett, and I have the, the distinct pleasure and honor of interviewing Randy Wilson, who was the TCDLA president in 2005 and 2006. Uh, Randy, could you tell us where you were raised? Uh, well, I was born in Denton, Texas, moved to Florida and Alabama. Uh, in 1954, we moved back to Texas, my, where my father had taken a job as the news director of uh, KRBC and after two years there my dad decided to go to law school and so we moved to Waco my dad went to Baylor Law School moved back to Abilene in 1959 and that's where I was raised in Abilene. Did, you, did your dad practice law in Abilene? Yes he did. Yes, did he, he did. inspire you to go to law school? Not really. Uh, uh, to be quite frank with you I wanted to be a naval aviator and uh, I toyed with that between naval aviator and being a veterinarian, uh, but my skills in science and math were not very good. So the, uh, so the veterinarian kind of went by the wayside. The war in Vietnam scared me away from being a naval aviator. And plus I'd gotten married in college and it was the quickest way to get through back then. They had a special type of situation at Baylor Law School if you had good enough grades, and it was before the LSAT, you could apply to Baylor Law School when you got 90 hours. And if your grades were good enough, they would accept you. So I have no undergraduate degree. All I have is a Juris Doctorate from Baylor Law School. And so at 90 hours, I entered Baylor Law School and went to law school. So instead of making that decision, you could have been flying airplanes off of aircraft carriers. Well, yeah, I had qualified. Uh, I had been in ROTC to keep from getting drafted uh, back during the when the war in Vietnam got really, really rolling, you know. So, uh, uh, and I qualified to go to to become a naval aviator, and enter the program. So, uh, I bailed out of that. Do you think there's any similarity between criminal trial work and flying airplanes off of aircraft carriers? They're both just about as dangerous. <laughs> so you decided to go to Baylor Law School. Uh, when you went to law school. Did you know what you wanted to do in law? Not really. Uh, law school is so different now than it was when I went. Uh, at that time, Baylor Law School only had about 250 students. Uh, it's much larger than that now. Uh, as I worked my way through uh, law school, uh, primarily I decided I wanted to represent people. I didn't want to represent banks, insurance companies, and corporations. Uh, uh, my initial, uh, I had three job offers when I graduated from law school. One was to the uh, district attorney's office in Tarrant County. Another was to, with an admiralty law firm out of Houston called Royston, Raisner & Cook. And uh, the other one was with my father's law firm in Abilene. Uh, my wife did not want to live in Fort Worth or Houston, so I took the job with my father's law firm in Abilene. And that's where I went after law school. When you started practicing with your father, what kind of work did you do? General practice. Back then, uh, you did everything. You know, everything from drafting wills, doing deeds, uh, workman's comp, personal injury, uh, criminal, divorce, so on and so forth. You know, it's a little striking now when I look back on it, where we were doing divorces for $25 that was the attorney's fee and the filing fee was three dollars and it cost a dollar to have someone served. And how many pages were the divorce decrees? Divorce decree about a page and a half legal size, double spaced, you know, a lot different than it is now. That's, that's very different. Uh, so you started in Abilene, and did you, have you been in Abilene the whole time or have you worked other places? No, uh, probably the biggest mistake I ever made in my whole life was going to work for my dad's law firm. Uh, though I didn't really work for my father, I worked for his partner and I had a wife and two children and I started work for them for $500 a month back then. After What year was this? This would be 1970. Uh, I'd been there about 14 or 15 months. I was producing well for the firm. I went to them and asked for a raise. Didn't want a big raise, I just wanted, I was having a hard time living on that salary. And they advised me at that time to uh, 
that you had to be there three years before they would make any type of fee splitting arrangements or uh, any type of progression within the firm. And I said, fine, reached in my pocket, took the, the front door keys, pitched them on the desk and said, I quit. And I quit and came to Dallas to look for a, a job. And I went to work over on the south side of Dallas and Oak Cliff. And my beginning salary there was 2500 a month plus a bonus. So I quintupled my salary by coming to Dallas. I practiced here in Dallas for about 18 or 19 months. What kind of work did you do? Uh, primarily criminal and PI work. Uh, they've kind of fed off of each other for this particular lawyer that I was working for. Uh, during that period of time, my name had been given to a law firm out of uh, Houston called Downman, Jones & Schechter, which was an Admiralty and FELA PI firm. Uh, I'm sitting in my office one day and the phone rings and it's Arthur Schechter and he asked me to meet him at the airport. I didn't know who he was said he wanted to talk to me about something. I go out there. He then uh, talks to me probably three or four more times and offered me a much more lucrative position than where I was. So I moved to Houston and was down there until 1975. What did you do after that? I didn't like what I was doing. Uh, I was traveling way too much, uh, three, three and a half weeks a month. Mm -hmm. And wasn't around my family. Uh, I just told my wife that I was going to quit and we had some money put back and so I went back to Abilene and uh, rented office space from my father. We were not partners, we just rented off, I just rented office space. So I just hung out a shingle and I've been in Abilene since 1975. What has your law practice been like uh, in Abilene? Well, you have to do a little bit of general work. Uh, you got to do a few wills, you got to do uh, some deeds every once in a while. Primarily my practice uh, from the get-go has been criminal defense and family law. I do a lot of family law as well. Uh, in Abilene, it's just not large enough to just do one type of law. You can't do it. Uh, it's just not. We have too many lawyers and too few people. Are you? A sole practitioner now? Yes, I'm a sole practitioner. I do have a lawyer in my office and have had uh, for a number of years, but the lawyer is primarily uh, on his own. He just kind of rents space from me. And when did you first learn about TCDLA? Back in the early part of the 70s, Jim Robinson in our law firm, in my dad's law firm, uh, was a charter member as was my father. And I went to a couple of meetings with them then. That was the first time. Uh, when I left uh, Abilene and came to Dallas, didn't hear much about TCDLA. And uh, then I really didn't get back into a whole lot of uh, involvement with TCDLA until the late 80s, early 90s. When did you join TCDLA? I think I joined it a couple of times. I joined it originally when it was formed. And then I joined again, I think, when I moved back to Abilene and let the membership lapse a time or two and then got back into it and then in um, I think I really got active and, and started working in TCDLA in the very late 80s early 90s. Why did you decide to do that? To be quite frank with you I went to a, a seminar in San Antonio and uh, I heard a speech by Warren Burnett, who I knew, and it inspired me, and then at that seminar, Tim Evans and I somehow were seated near each other or whatever. Tim invited me to go to uh, lunch with he and his wife, and at that time we talked about TCDLA, and he told me that I ought to get involved. I had been inspired by Warren, and that's when it started. What was it that, that Warren said, or what was his speech about that inspired I think you? That, that we're the last bastion for the citizen accused to protect the freedoms of, of the citizen accused in the, in the United States. I've always been a constitutionalist and a 
pretty much a, a liberal when it comes to my political philosophy and looking out for the common man rather than the, the bank, the corporation, the insurance company, the utility company, that sort of thing. And, and he just rang my chimes with it and uh, just so happened everything kind of fell in place with Tim. And uh, that's where it started. When you first, what was your initial involvement with TCDLA? Probably, this was back in the era of uh, Lillian and John, and uh, Lillian had spoken to me about having, they were having membership problems as far as maintaining membership and signing up new members. And so I proposed, and I don't even remember who the president was, it may have been Richard Anderson or someone like that, to let me work on membership. And what I started doing was going to every seminar that TCLA did at that time, which is not anything like it is now. And we did like 10 or 12 a year back then. Um, and when people were signing up, the walk-ins were signing up at the, at the seminar, I would sit there and uh, try to talk people into joining up at that point in time. Uh, at that point, I had also been successful at that particular point in time and getting them to reduce the first year membership down to $75 so that we could possibly get more members. I remember being at a seminar in an out of the way place and seeing you loading and unloading boxes. Sure, I helped, I helped them out. You know, I wasn't, uh, I didn't just go and, you know, uh, uh, try to sell the membership. I helped any way that I could. Uh, my involvement that way, I got to meet lots of more of the I call them the uppity, uppity up members, the ones that were higher up in the organization. Uh, I was asked to speak at a few seminars and just, just kind of developed from there. Well, what I was told is that you just showed up and started working and, and signed up people that sold merchandise and sold publications sure. and just did anything that needed to be done. Uh, and I was very impressed by that. Well, it never, it, it never, uh, bothered me, you know, whether I was a course director or a speaker or attendee or they're uh, trying to uh, sell memberships. You know, if, the, if you need to unload, you need to set up, that's just part of, you know, part of my job or part of what I like to do for the organization. <coughs> Has your law practice changed since you started? 1970? Sure. And how's it changed? I think I'm a better lawyer uh, than I was in 1970, no question, because of the experience. I've tried lots of cases. Uh, I think my involvement in TCDLA has not only helped me in my criminal practice, it's also helped in the family law practice as well. Because a lot of the things that you do in the trial of a criminal case are applicable in the trial of a custody case. There are lots of things that you learn in one that you can use in the other. And I think that my involvement with TCDLA, because I've been to so many seminars and been course director in so many seminars, that you learn a lot. Not saying that I never make a mistake or that I always do it right, but you, you, you know, I've learned a lot. And I think I'm a lot better lawyer than I was 38 years, 37 years ago. So how long have you been? Have you been a lawyer for 38 years now? Yeah. Yeah. You got it down? You got it all right now? I've reached that point in my career where I keep wondering if I'm really this stupid. Uh, I always wonder, you know, you know, I should have known more than that. Or, you know, why didn't I know that? Or why, you know, what did I miss? You know, if someone had told me 38 years ago, I'd still be working this hard at my age. And that's length of practice. And that I would probably be as less confident in my skills and knowledge as I am, then I would probably tell them you're crazy. But it seems like the more that I learn, the more that I question my own ability, the more that I question my own knowledge, that have I covered all the bases, have I done everything right? And I think that's just the way it's gone. Would it be accurate to say perhaps you've learned where all the bases are? I know where the bases are. I know where the bases are, and, and, and you know, every lawyer that tries lawsuits will tell you that, that you know, after you try the lawsuit, hindsight's 20-20, and you're, 
you reflect back over it. Why did I do that? Or why didn't I not? Why, why did I not do that? And and I guess it's just caring, caring about what you do, and not just the monetary aspect. What do you think has been the highlight of, of your legal career? There would be two things. The first one would be uh, being privileged enough to be president of this association. Uh, there's nothing more near and dear to my heart than Texas Criminal Defense Lawyers and TCDLEI. The second thing, highlight of my career, is that this year will be my 15th year on the faculty at the Trial College in Huntsville. And I think out of all the things that TCDLA does, that's probably my favorite. I think it. Uh, I can't tell you anything, even my annual fishing trip to Costa Rica, that I look forward to more than going to Huntsville and working with young lawyers. Obviously, we're doing these interviews to, to save this for, for people who come after us. So what we would hope is that lawyers will, will look at these and down the road and, and learn something from them. So if you had to to tell those who look at, at this, this interview in the future about law practice and about what TCDLA can do for you, what would you say? Two things. First off, uh, lawyers are terrible egotists. And they go from megalomania all the way down to not much, not much of an egotist at all. And I think what you're, you're in a situation when you're practicing law, that there needs to be a balance. If I have one regret about my 38 years, it's probably that I have neglected my family at times when I shouldn't have. Uh, but for my wife and but for my children, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Uh, I owe everything that I am and what I may hope to be in the future to my wife. If you're a lawyer and if you're a president in TCDLA, I want to advise you, don't forget about the why. Right? I'm not saying that we never have an argument or we never have a fight, because we do, we're human beings. But one, the one thing that has never left my thoughts, even during a trial, is my wife. Randy, thank you very much. Thank you.